Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, we are going to be covering genetics and how it affects your blood groups. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on because I'll be posting new content every Tuesday and Thursday for grade eight to 12 learners. Also, if you're interested in improving your marks, getting an A in the finals, and you want a little extra attention and help from me, don't forget to join my membership, which you can find on my home YouTube page. So let's begin by looking at the physical characteristics of blood groups first before we get into the types of genetics that control it. Now, in front of you here, we have four red blood cells or erythrocytes, and you will notice that they are slightly different on their outside appearance. And this is because each of them has a different kind of antigen on the outside. Now, an antigen is a protein that we find on the outside of our cells, and essentially it allows your body to determine whether or not a cell belongs there or if it's a foreign invader. Now, when we talk about blood groups, we talk about the antigens that you have on the outside of your red blood cells, and that will tell you the blood group that you are. So if you have antigens A on the outside of your uh, blood cells, you're gonna have type A. If you have antigens for B, you'll be type B. If you are uh, type blood AB, it means you have both of those antigens and we can see both of them on the outside. However, if you have no antigens for A or B, then you are actually O blood type. Now, knowing the type of antigen you have on the outside of your blood group is important for donating blood and making sure that you are a blood match because essentially, Antigens allow you to give blood to people who fall into the same category as you. Um, and then there is also something called a universal donor, which essentially means that someone like blood group O can give to all of these blood groups because they don't have any antigens. Whereas someone like blood group AB, they can only give to AB because of their antigen uh, composition. Now let's get into the genetics that governs your complete and co-dominance that we see in blood groups. Now the first thing I want to point out before we even begin on the content is what are the allele letters that you need to use. I want to stress to you very, very importantly here that the letter I's that they use here for the alleles are universal and they are the only letters you are allowed to use in an exam. Please do not use any other letters other than the capital letter I and the lowercase i with the superscript AB on it. That is the only thing you're allowed to use in an exam and your examiner will expect you to use the correct one and not to make up your own. So let's break the blood groups into the complete and the co-dominant groups that we find them in. Now, if we start off with the co-dominant versions, if you remember in my previous video, types of dominance, and I've just linked it above now for you to go and have a look, co-dominance means that uh, two characteristics or two traits share equal space in the phenotypic expression. In other words, um, it means that your two traits will be equally visible um, in the blood group or equally visible in the, let's say, the fur color of a cow. And so we see that as an example, when we look at blood group AB, if you have a look over at the genotype, we use two capital letter I's with the superscript AB, and they are equally expressed. So therefore, we write both AB in the phenotype. But then we need to move into the complete dominance one. And so what's interesting here when we look at the complete dominance is that A and B are co-dominant. They can exist with each other, but A and B are dominant over the letter O. And so what we need to see here is a different kind of dominance happening, something that we've learned before. 
And if you look at the genotypic um, examples, if we look at the first one for a blood group, you will see here, the one I've underlined now, that there is a capital uh, I with an A and then a lowercase i. The lowercase i represents blood group uh, O. And so, for example, that means this person over here has inherited one allele with an A on it and then one allele that is representing an O. And so what that means is this particular person is going to express physically blood group A, even though they carry a allele for the letter O. And the reason for that is how complete dominance works. Again, it's a law. And the law states that when uh, two contrasting traits appear as a heterozygous mix, which is what we see here, this is a heterozygous mix, the dominant allele will mask the recessive allele. And so that means this person will have uh, a blood group. Likewise with the one below, same situation. If there is just one uh, capital I with a B, it automatically means that that person will be blood group B. And we can ignore essentially this lowercase I because it's a recessive allele. It's masked. That then means that the only way you can be blood group O if you are following this law of dominance is you need to have two lowercase i's. You need to have two recessive alleles in order to have this characteristic. So there are very many ways that they're going to ask this in the exam. And generally, the questions sort of go along the lines of, well, if the father is this blood group um, and the mother is this blood group, what are the chances of them having a child with blood group A or blood group B? And that's where you would use those genetic crosses that we've worked out before. And I've linked my monohybrid cross above to help you explain how you would do a simple monohybrid cross to work that out. But another way that they can ask this question is through paternity testing. Now, we've actually learned a little bit about paternity testing because paternity testing refers to testing for uh, someone's father using his genetics and his DNA. And um, we've done this in the DNA videos where we spoke about how you use a DNA profile to determine paternity. But you can technically also use blood groups. However, there is a limitation to this. And so I want to really stress this because this can be an exam question um, and it can come up. They might ask you, can you use blood groups to determine someone's father? And the answer is simply that blood groups can only eliminate a potential father. They cannot confirm a father. Uh, and, and the reason for that is everybody else in the world also has similar blood groups. Um, just because the father uh, or the potential father is a blood group A and the child is blood group A doesn't automatically mean that that is their child. It's just so happens that they have the same blood group, but that doesn't mean that that's necessarily their child. You've got to take into consideration what the mother's blood group was. And also maybe the, there's potentially a different father with the same blood group. And so I'm going to give you a couple of uh, questions and we're going to use this table alongside just to see how this would work. And so what we see alongside here is a table with the father's blood type at the top here, the mother's on the side. And then it gives you all the possible combinations. Like, for example, if a mother is blood group A and the father is blood group A, the only two possible combinations that could be produced are A or O. Now, if you're wondering how did we get just those two values, well, we need to look at the alleles of the two parents. So that means that mom is either going to be a capital I uh, with an A on both of her alleles like this, um, or she can be capital I with an A and then a lowercase I. And the same can be for, for this dad over here, the, the, the dad that is an A. And so those are the only comp combinations that they can be, those two parents. And so if they are both this option over here, their baby will be 100% A blood group, no other possibilities. But if they are heterozygous like this one, if two of their smaller lowercase i's go together, then you would end up with an O blood group. So 
This blind group is pretty nifty, this table, to help you figure this out. And so I'm going to give you some examples of things that you might see, okay? So here's an example. A male with blood type AB cannot have a child with blood group O. Um, and we can prove that by even just simply looking at the table, but I'll also prove it a different way. Here is the father's blood group, AB. And if you look through the list going down, you will notice that there is no O's present, regardless of what the mother is. Even if the mother down here is an O blood group, it's impossible. And the reason for that is that means that our father is blood group AB. Okay, so we write it like this. That means that when he has children, the only possible children that he could produce must have either an A or a B in their phenotype. And this is because in order for you to have blood group O, you would need two lowercase I's or two small I's. And so even if the mother was something like this, a capital I with an A and then a lowercase I, she only has one letter uh, I to produce here. She only has one small uh, lowercase I to offer. And so even if she tried to form this child, it wouldn't be possible because she only has one. The father, on the other hand, he doesn't have a lowercase i to offer. And so this couldn't possibly be his child. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a quick terminology recap. First of all, we looked at antigens, and those were the proteins on the outside of your cell that determine whether or not that cell belongs to you, but it also determines on your red blood cells what blood group you fall into, which leads me to the types of blood groups we have, which is A, B, AB, and O, and those are determined by the presence or absence of those antigens. We then looked at complete dominance. Now, this is the dominance where alleles are dominant over recessive ones. And in blood groups, blood group A and blood group B are dominant over O, whereas co-dominance is seen in blood group AB, where they are equally expressed in the phenotype. We then looked at the very specific genotype that we see in blood groups, which is where we use the letter I. We use a capital I attached with a superscript AB um, for the A and B blood groups, and then a lower uh, case I for O. We then also looked at phenotypes of your blood, which means the physical expression of these alleles. And lastly, we looked at paternity testing, which is testing for a father. Remember that paternity testing with blood groups can only um, eliminate fathers. It cannot confirm who the actual father is. Now, if you'd like to use these particular words to create flashcards, I suggest you do. It's a lovely way to revise. And if you've liked this video, I hope that you give it a thumbs up, you subscribe, and you turn your notifications on. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.